to the 4th of July crime scene that left Arizona stunned years ago. It's a true crime story involving stolen evidence, an undercover cop gone bad, and two law enforcement officers gunned down while trying to get help. This all happened 28 years ago in Yuma, and the holiday is still tough for the victims and their families who had to live through this and lost members of their family. True Crime Arizona's Brianna Whitney spent hours digging through file tapes on this case today. And Brianna, this one really shocked a lot of people across the state. No, it did. Nobody saw this coming back in 1995, and this is why. This was Jack Hudson. He was known as an exemplary Yuma County Sheriff's deputy at the time, but once he started working undercover, he turned into somebody nobody could rem remember or see anymore. He was addicted to drugs, and he killed two of his own. Those officers, law enforcement officers in Yuma, were beloved, and their families still grapple with this senseless loss today. Yuma Police Lieutenant Dan Elkins was used to responding to 911 calls, not making them. Hurry up. Okay, I'll hurry. Good. Okay. Hurry up. You there? Yes, I'm here. Hurry. Okay, we're sending him out. Hurry. That audio now haunting and heartbreaking because just moments later, Elkins was shot and killed along with DPS Sergeant Mike Crow and the convicted killer, a Yuma County Sheriff's deputy himself, Jack Hudson. Hudson had been on the South Border Alliance Narcotics Task Force with Elkins and Crow and had been working undercover. Right now it's very hard to, to grasp the fact that it has happened. Days before the shooting, authorities discovered items were missing from this evidence room, and they installed a video camera. On 4th of July, Elkins, Crow, and another officer went to the building to account for all the evidence room keys. And once inside, found safes broken into and destroyed, and multiple offices ransacked. That's when police say they ran into a fellow undercover cop, Jack Hudson, who began firing a 9mm automatic weapon. The victims were not armed. This video showing bloody shoe prints left behind moments after Hudson went on his deadly rampage. Hudson was arrested in the parking lot, a deputy that before this served as a role model to others in the department, according to the sheriff at the time. I wish I could get in his head. I wish I knew what he was thinking, and I wish I knew why I don't. At Mike Crow's service, his two daughters were just 12 and 14 years old as they walked behind his casket. His wife, Stephanie, telling me on the phone today that even 28 years later, this holiday doesn't get easier for her and their two daughters, who are now in their 40s. She described him as an amazing husband and father, and the impact he left on Arizona was felt by all he worked with, even the top leader in our state. Sergeant Michael Crow. You gave us strength and courage. For us, you gave your life. We love you for it. We honor you. We will meet again. Mike Crow's wife says it's still hard for her and the girls to talk about, but that he would have loved to see the wonderful women his daughters grew up to be and would have loved to play with his grandkids, which of course makes the 4th of July very bittersweet now. I did reach out to Dan Elkin's wife, but I did not hear back today. Amazing to see all that old video from, you know, the ransacked office there to Governor Symington right. speaking about this at the end. What happened to the killer? What happened to Hudson? So Jack Hudson was convicted of murder. He was sentenced to life in prison. He ended up dying in prison in 2017, but for years, he denied remembering anything he did, that he was high on drugs at the time. And just about an hour ago, I got off the phone with former DPS officer Steve Trethaway, who ended up interviewing Jack Hudson eight times while he was in prison. And it was on Hudson's deathbed, the final interview, when he finally revealed more than he ever had before. Take a listen. He looked up and he said, well, well, look who's here. And I said, can you talk? He said he, he would. I started piecing through that seven deadly minutes where he killed both officers. I said, Jack, do you remember, do you remember the shooting? Do you remember the sound of the guns going off? And he thought a little bit. He said, yeah, I remember. I remember the guns going off. And so there were a couple pieces like that in that seven minutes where he said he remembered something, which he'd always denied previously. He lived for almost two more weeks and he passed away. 
So the killer was convicted, but the fact that he acknowledged it in that way, do you think that maybe helped the victim's families in any way? I do a little bit, and Steve said he called Stephanie, Mike Crow's wife, after to tell him when Jack passed away. He did feel that that was a little bit of remorse for the first time, but I mean, that was years after. This is 2017, right, and this happened in 1995. So. Yeah, it was a long road to that point. I think it was helpful to the families, but was that a true, you know, I'm sorry? I don't think so. No. And those officers, what Steve was telling me, they were on vacation. They were supposed to come back on July 5th, but because somebody was stealing things out of the evidence room, mm. they were asked to come in on the 4th and look and account for all those the keys to the evidence room. Sure. So it was... I mean, they weren't supposed to be working that day. They were helping out, and unfortunately, this is what happened. It was almost like a, a deathbed confession sort toward of. the end there. Yeah, yeah, you, you, could, you could say so. And huh. uh, yeah, Steve said it was difficult, but he's actually working to write a book on it because he spent so much time with Jack, and he was friends with Mike Crow at DPS. So yeah, there's a lot there. But honestly, I walked into work today, and I didn't know what I was going to cover for true crime. And when I started looking into this and pulling tapes and spending mm. hours upstairs in all, our vault, and then talking to the families today, it's amazing what we can find there with some old cases that a lot of Arizonans who live here now may not have known before. Mm -hmm. So it's nice yeah. to remember these officers today. New to today. all of us. Yeah, yeah, new to me. Yeah, Brianna, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. All right, a lot more.